section 2.4 more application problems part two let's do a motion problem while on vacation gary is driving his car on an interstate highway at the rate of 76 miles an hour gary passes a car going in the same direction that's traveling at the rate of 68 miles per hour if both cars maintain the same these rates how long would it take for two cars to be 20 miles apart? So just a little background. <clears throat> um, when you have the word so many miles apart, okay, like as we have in this problem, there are two cases, case one, case two. Case one is like both cars are what? Traveling in the same directions. Case two is cars are traveling in what? Opposite directions. If they travel in the same directions, we subtract what? Distances. If they travel in opposite directions, we add distances. So this is pretty much true for all the motion problems, which you have the words miles apart. So in this case, looks like they go in the same direction. So when it comes to distances, we're gonna what? Um, subtract the distance of the slower car from the large, uh, faster car. So the question was, how long would it take? Remember, the time is missing because it says how long. So our let x be is the time, what? For two cars to be, what? 20 miles apart. So remember, the question was, how long does it take? So the time is missing. Okay, so these are the names. This is a rate, which is miles per hour. This is time, which is hour. And this is what? Distance, which is miles. So remember, this is R times T equals distance. So we write the motion uh, uh, formula backwards. Okay, suppose this is Gary's car. Imagine this is the other car. Gary was uh, driving his car at the rate of 76 miles per hour. The other car was, what, going 68 miles per hour. So obviously Gary was going faster. Okay, so we decided the time it takes for two cars to be 20 miles per hour is X. So that's the same time, right? That would be the only time they will be, what, 20 miles an hour. So there is no different times so the times must be uh, same so you multiply these guys these two boxes and put the result in the last box so this would be 76x this would be 68x remember we said when you see the words what miles apart if the cars go in the same direction in the same direction travel in the same direction we subtract the distances if it go if they go opposite directions we add distances so in this case it says same direction, so we subtract. What do we subtract? The distance of what? Slower car from the what? Faster car. So this would be 76x minus 66x and equals to 20. So subtract the distances, set it equal to that many parts apart. Once again, if the cars are going uh, opposite, like let's say one is going towards LA, the other one is going towards San Diego, you add the distances and set it equal to whatever the many miles they happen to be apart. Solve this, so you get what? 8x is equal to 20, so x is equal to 20 over 8, which is 5 over 2, which is 2.5 hours. So let's uh, comment on what we just got. So we would say it takes or it took what? 2.5 hours for what? Two cars to be what? 20 miles apart. And that's pretty much the end of the problem. Remember, I said 
The main components of the word problems is let x be, describe what x stands for, correct? And algebraic equation. The rest are like icing on the cake. These are the most true important parts of any word problem. The description of your unknown and the algebraic equation. So remember, there is no guessing involved, yes? All right, one more word problem. So this is about walking on the beach. It's kind of like similar to what I did in the previous uh, video. Max leaves his beach condo and uh, begins walking down the beach at the rate of what? Three miles an hour. 30 minutes later, once again, immediately changed it, what? 30 minutes into half an hour. So divide both sides by what? Uh, divide 30 by what? 60 minutes, so you get half an hour. Because we have 60 minutes in an hour. 30 minutes later, Rihanna leaves the same condo and begins walking down the same beach at the rate of four miles an hour. Um, so the question is, how long would it take for Rihanna to catch up with Max? Remember, this is one of those catching up problems. And how far from the condo will Rihanna will catch up with the Max? Okay, so in this case, what we like to do is say, let X be what? Uh, Rihanna's time. Remember, it says, how long would it take for Rihanna to catch up with Max? So let X be the time. Rihanna's time. Okay, so Max's rate was three, Rihanna's rate was four. Remember, Rihanna has to go faster in order to catch up with Max. But if Rihanna's time was X and Max was what? On the walking on the beach 30 minutes ahead of Rihanna, so he had a head start, so this would be X plus one half. Where did one half come from? Remember, that's the same as 30 minutes. So in any words, Max had a head start. Okay, so you multiply these guys out because remember, this is a rate times time is equal to distance. So you kind of go three times X plus two. This is so many miles. And this is four times X. Multiply these two boxes, put the answer in the third box. To catch up, remember from previous uh, video, means what? Same distances, okay? So what we do, we set these two distances equal and solve for x. How do you do this? You kind of uh, <clears throat> oh, distribute the three, so you get three x plus three halves is equal to four x, correct? And then you multiply those sides by two to clean up the fraction. So you get six X plus what? Uh, three is equal to eight X. So that will be three is equal to two X. So X is equal to three halves, which is 1.5 hours. Okay, <clears throat> so that would be like part A. Part B, which is finding the distance, you can either find the distance from here or here. Because remember, they have to what? Travel the same distance. So it doesn't matter which distance uh, formula you select to find how far from the condo will uh, Rihanna catch up with Max. I'm going to take this guy because that looks nasty. So I'm going to take 4x. And I'm going to replace the x with what I had in part a, which is 3 halves. So that would be 6 miles. So this is part a. That's part b. Part a was how long will it take for Rihanna to catch up with Max? An hour and a half. Part b, how far? How far is distance? How long is time? Correct? Okay. So it takes, so I'm going to write what? It takes, it takes, what, 1.5 hours for Rihanna, what, uh, Rihanna to catch up with, what, Max. Okay, and um, that's like part A, part B is like what, um, Rihanna, Rihanna cut up, up with uh, Max, what? 
when she was when she was what six miles away uh, six miles away from what away from the condo so it took 1.5 hours for Rihanna to catch up with Max and Rihanna got caught up with Max when she was six exactly six miles away from the condo and that's pretty much how you do this. Once again, the most important part of any work problem is what the let x be and the algebraic equation, which means you have to have an equation with x in it, right? Next one is a mixture problem. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is like Kim Park is the owner of Starbucks coffee. She sells Kona coffee for six bucks and 20 uh, cents per pound, so this is called the unit price. Okay. And Amaretto coffee, which sells for five bucks and uh, 80 cents, that's also unit price. She finds that by mixing these two blends, she creates a coffee that sells well. If she uses 18 pounds of Amaretto coffee in the blend and likes to sell the mixture for $6 and what, 10 cents a pound, that's also unit price. How many pounds of Kona coffee should she mix with Amaretto coffee? Obviously, uh, the amount of what? Notice I have underlined it. The amount of Kona coffee is missing. So I'm going to go let X be amount of the what? Kona coffee. Was that right? <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm gonna what? Draw two boxes, add them up. So this is like box number one, this is like box number two, and this is like our mixture. And I set it equal to the third box. Suppose this is the Kona. Suppose this is what? Amaretto. Excuse me. So we decided X many pounds of Kona gets to be uh, what? <coughs> Mixed with what? 18 pounds of Amaretto. But Kona is going for what? Six bucks and 20 cents a pound. That's unit price. And the Kona is going, uh, Amaretto is going five bucks and 80 cents a pound. And the mixture is going for six bucks and 10 cents a pound. Remember, this is not a flat rate, it's unit price. Why? Because it says per pound. So how many pounds of mixture do you have? Well, X many pounds of Kona plus 18 what, pounds of uh, Amaretto, that gives you X plus 18 pounds. Just add the tops right here of the boxes, put the answer in what? In the third. Okay, then, algebraic equation. So let's see what the cost is. So you multiply or the revenue. Multiply what? Uh, unit price by the amount of uh, what? coffee purchased. So this is the revenue, that's income. Plus 5.8 times 18 equals, notice I'm just multiplying the uh, what numbers inside the boxes. Remember in uh, video number one, we didn't multiply this by the amount of amount, by the amount, because that wasn't the unit price. It was just the dollar amount, which was flat rate out the door. But this guy is a unit price. So we have to multiply it by the amount of what? Coffee to, in order to find the revenue for the mixture. Okay, revenue means income. All right, then, once again, the most important part of any word problem is let x be the description of your unknown and the algebraic equation. Uh, steps four and five are icing on the cake, yes? So because each of these guys have two decimal places, so you multiply both sides by 100 to move the decimal places two places to the right, which is the same as because they all have two decimal places, you can just simply what drop the decimal point and write the problem this way. Okay, so now <clears throat> we kind of uh, go ahead and what uh, multiply the numbers and divide, uh, remove the parentheses here, and we get.
get something like this. Collect the x's to the left, numbers to the right, so you get 10x is equal to 540. Divide both sides by 10, so x is equal to 40, 54. So now we have to tell people what exactly 54 is. 54 is Kim, the owner, had to what? Mix 54 pounds of Kona. Uh, Kona. Uh, coffee, coffee, to the Emeretto, Emeretto coffee. So it had to be 54 pounds of this plus 18 pounds of Emeretto. So the final answer is 54 pounds. Let's do an interest rate, simple interest rate. Remember the formula is right here. I is equal to PRT. I stands for interest. P is the principal amount deposited. R is the interest rate. T is the time, but it has to be a fraction of a year or whole year. And R has to be in decimal, not percent. Once again, Terry invested 3,000 for two years. Be careful, it's two years. So right away, you know the time is two. So put two, what, for both investments, because it says for two years. At the rate of 3.5%, so 3.5% uh, is 0 0.035 in decimal. So this is the same as 3.5%. To change the percentage into decimal, move the decimal point two places to the left and drop the percentage sign. And 2.5% is 0 0.025. So that would be 2.5%. After two years, she earns a what? Uh, income or interest of 190 bucks. So remember, this is the total interest. That's like total I. How much was invested at each rate? Okay, once again. So uh, let's uh, pretend X is what? The amount um, invested invested at either of these guys. It doesn't matter. I went with 3.5%. Okay, so if this is X, so what's left of 3,000 is 3,000 minus X. So remember, these are the dollar amounts. And notice the way I know I kind of uh, set up the uh, principles correct. If you add these guys up, the X is canceled, so you get 3,000. That's how you know. So it's not X minus 3,000, it's 3,000 minus X. Because if you add these guys up, X's should cancel. So it will give you 3,000. So that's a nice way to check and see if you've got the order here correct. All right then, so this would be like 0 0.035. This would be like 0 0.025. Remember, we're supposed to multiply these three boxes and set it equal to what? interest in the very last box, which is 0.07x, two times 0.035 is 0.07 times x, and then two times 0.05 is like 0.025 is what? 0.05 times 3,000 minus x. So remember, this is kind of like interest. We do know the total interest, the total interest, is 190 bucks. So what's the total interest? That means the interest, what, from the investment number one, plus the interest from investment number two should add up to 190. So my algebraic equation is what? 0.07x plus 0.05 times 3,000 minus x should be 190 bucks, should be equal to 190 bucks. Once again, uh, the important part of this problem is what was x equal to? Describe it in English, no equations. And what is your algebraic equation? Yes, you know, an equation with, you know, equal sign and x is in it. Okay, you got two decimal places in each of these numbers. So multiply both sides by 100 to uh, what? Clean up the decimal places. So you get 7x plus 5 times what? 3,000 minus x equals what? Uh, 19,000. Remember, you're supposed to multiply this by 100. Notice I only multiply 0.05 by 100. I did not multiply it by 3,000 minus x. 
Okay, so when it comes to multiplying a bunch of numbers, you only multiply by one of the numbers, not all of them, because this is not a distribution law. Alrighty, so this, now this guy is distribution. So distribute the five, so you get seven x plus what? 15,000 minus five x equals 19,000. And lo and behold, when you combine the like terms, you get something like this, divide both sides by two, you get this. So tell people what exactly is it that you found. So I would say Terry, is that right? Uh, invested, invested, what? 2,000 bucks at 3.5%, 3.5% uh, 3 and Remember the total was what? 3,000. So if 2,000 was invested here, then what's left out of 3,000, which is 1,000 um, at what? 2.5%. Remember 2,000 plus 1,000 should add up to what? The total investment of 3,000. And that's pretty much how you do this problem. Thank you.